Okay, this should be a little bit of a shorter video here. We're going to talk about the Byzantine Empire. Now, we've mentioned last week with the fall of Rome, and even before the fall of Rome with Constantine, the idea of the empire beginning to split. Constantine's going to build a new capital in the east called Constantinople, yet Rome will still be in the west. Constantinople will be in the east. Constantine will actually never return back to Rome. However, it'll have his beginning of his new city, his new modern city. And of course, as Rome starts to kind of fall apart much later after the Pax Romana in the second and third century, the emperor Diocletian will make the official decision to split the empire in two. And you have a Western Roman Empire and an Eastern Roman Empire. So when you have this Byzantine, you know, Roman, Rome is going to split. It's going to fall into two parts, and it's begin. You're going to see start to see a lot of changes between what is what had been in Western Rome and what is now in Eastern Rome, which will be called the Byzantine Empire. The area where Constantinople is being built, or it was built, is called Byzantium, hence the term the Byzantine Empire. So. You still have the Roman Empire in the West as Rome's population is declining, and then you're going to have the East, this Byzantine Empire. Let me show you a picture, um, a map of what this all looks like and kind of who's in control and what, what we're looking at here. So let me flip down over here. So the Byzantine Empire, the new Rome. All right, here's what Rome divided looks like in 294. Now, this is after the end of the Pax Romana, so the decline of the 3rd century in Rome was happening. You can see here this green area. That is the Western Roman Empire. This um, purplish area is going to be the Eastern Roman Empire. And then what you have are the... Um, Essentially, the tribal Germanic groups that are in the north are going to come in and kind of collapse Rome upon itself. And this next one, so you have Constantine City. You can see where Rome sits in the middle of the Italian peninsula. And here is Constantinople, which will become Istanbul. Constantinople sits on the Bosphorus Straits between what is known as the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. It's a great area for trade. It actually sits on both sides. Today, Istanbul sits on both sides. And you have European Istanbul and Asian Istanbul. Um, but right in this area, this is going to be a major point of conflict for many years down the road. You can see the barbarian invasions, the movements of the barbarians, or really the non-Romans from the north into the south, and really pushing uh, the Roman Empire away and really destroying it here around the middle of the 5th century. And then you have Constantinople, the city that's being built. It's a walled, gated city. It's protected here, the Bosphorus Straits. It's protected by what's called the Golden Horn. Um, we'll show you a picture of the Hagia Sophia here in a second. The Hippodrome, where they do the chariot races. You can see this long, oval-shaped uh, object is the Hippodrome. Um, the Hagia Sophia sits on the right on the Bosphorus Straits over here. Um, it's a very metropolitan city, very, very advanced for its time. All right, and there's sunset over the Golden Horn. You can see the, the turrets of the Hagia Sophia sitting in the distance. Um, and I'll show you a picture of that here in one second. But going back to the Byzantine Empire. When they separate, religion is also going to separate, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but understand, you have Christianity building up in Rome, but in the East, it's going to be another version of Christianity. You have the Catholic Church in the West, and what will be called the Eastern Orthodox Church in the East. So they're going to start to separate, and you're going to start to see personality shifts between what is Western and what is Eastern. And the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, will become very advanced for its day and last well into the 15th century, where the Western Roman Empire, the actual old Roman Empire will collapse. You'll still have the Roman Catholic Church, but we'll see the onset of those Middle Ages, those Dark Ages that are going to happen because of it. Now, the big part that we've got to know, and you've got to highlight this and underline this, is that in the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, one of its emperors, a guy by the name of Justinian, is going to really change uh, and push this side forward, okay? And what he's going to do is he's going to create what's called the Justinian Code. So go ahead and underline Justinian Code. That's huge. And what he's going to do is he's going to create this from Roman law. He's going to look at the Roman laws of the past, the old Roman Empire under the Republic, under the Empire, and he's going to make them fit into modern day, or what would be modern day for the Byzantines, law. And when we look at the laws, you can see how they're going to be significantly changed or significantly different from each other, uh, but they're also very similar. And understand this too, um, the Byzantines did not call themselves Byzantines, they called themselves Romans. And they wanted to keep that Roman mentality, but you're going to get away from speaking Latin, they're going to start to speak Greek, um, 
you're going to have this different church, Orthodox church, which is going to kind of build uh, their religious based uh, background differently, but they're still going to call themselves Roman even up until the 15th century. So let's get a look at what Justinian looks like because he's pretty important here to understand. All right, so here's a picture of Justinian. Okay, and you can see him here in the middle as the emperor. He is surrounded by um, what are religious people, in this case priests and archbishops of the Orthodox Church. Notice the halo around his head. That means he is holy. One thing with the emperor, um, especially now with the Byzantines, is that it's kind of like an absolute monarchy that we're going to see down the road or like we've seen uh, before with uh, with the Persians. It is a not only a political leader, but also a religious leader who is in control of their livelihood. So he's the head of the Eastern Orthodox Church, as well as being the head of the empire. Okay, and Justinian is very, very much a progressive thinker when it comes to how to run his empire, how he should take care of all the different people. All right, and a big reason he's able to do that, if I flash down another picture, is because of his wife, Theodora. Okay, he marries this very, very beautiful woman. Again, you can see she has a halo around her head, so she's considered holy because she is the queen of the Byzantine Empire. Um, but Theodora, who is a beautiful woman, she was an actress, a very, very popular woman who he marries, she actually convinces him to kind of push forward. There had been some civil war inside the city of Constantinople, and Justinian was going to flee the city, and she convinces him that if he wants to keep his empire and stay in control, he must not flee, and he doesn't. And when he doesn't do that, he's able to kind of quell the civil war and keep the Byzantines safe and kind of push them forward. And then he's able to establish his law, and he's going to look at, really, a few, you know, about a thousand years worth of, worth of Roman history and really create new law. I mean, thousands and thousands of pages of Roman history is going to be put into a very short Justinian code. And the code's going to break broken up four ways. You're going to have the actual code, which is taking the old 5,000 old Roman laws and making them modern. Okay, that's the actual law. And again, it's going to be written down. So carry this over with Hammurabi's code. Carry this over with the 12 tables. We're bringing this now to Justinian code. Okay, they are written down laws that the people can see. Then they're going to have what are called the digests. These are going to be ways that people explain the law, kind of like magazines in our modern idea where the law is actually explained to them. Okay, and people can understand what's going on with the law. Then you're going to have what are called institutes. And these are the how where you teach law these are going to be what are like universities where people go to law school and learn the justinian code to make it operate in justinian's time in the byzantine empire and then you're going to have what is called the novelle which are the new laws the laws that fit the time period for the byzantines so the people really understand how the laws are established and you can kind of see them come together which is going to make the byzantines very strong and push forward all right. And like I said earlier, religion also made a split. I'm not going to go into much depth here because we're going to talk about this down the road. Just understand <clears throat> there you have the Roman Catholic Church, which we'll talk about next week with the Middle Ages. And you're going to have what is called the Eastern Orthodox Church, which is going to be an offshoot of the Roman Catholic Church. There you're going to have what is called a patriarch. And that patriarch is going to act like the Pope in Rome, but they're going to operate very differently. There's going to be some questions on... Um, on uh, some th theological ideas of how the church should be run. And we'll talk about that more next week. Last thing I want to show you is a few pictures here. All right. We've got Theodora. There's the empire at its peak. You can see by the middle of the 6th century, it's almost back to the same size as what you had with the Roman Empire. One influence that's going to come in and really affect the Byzantines is going to be Islam. Islam's going to kind of come about here at the end of the 6th century into the early 7th century, and they're going to take back over this land. However, at this point, the Byzantines are in control by the middle of the 6th century. All right, so there's the Church of the Hagia Sophia. This is the Holy Wisdom. Um, you can see how large it is. He wanted it to be uh, a massive site for people to see as they're coming through the Bosphorus Straits. It really kind of like his um, his mark on the city to really show his strength and power. Now today this church is now a mosque um, because Istanbul is mainly an Islamic city. However, it still stands there today. Here's a picture of the inside. 
Okay, and you can see the arches that are influenced from Rome and also influenced from the Muslims. The picture of Christ here, uh, much more in the Eastern European mindset. You can see the Greek letters as opposed to the Latin of the Catholic Church. Okay, and again, we have the holiness, the halo around Christ's figure. And you also notice here that Christ is depicted as white. And we, we know in Christ in his time, probably from uh, Israel, Judea area, he's more Arab in nature, but here he is depicted more as a white person. All right, and then again, it goes on about Justinian's coat. All right, so make sure you get all this stuff down. We're going to do some readings on it uh, and move forward Justinian's code, and we'll be good to go.